this is the thing that I'm going to get out of this. Uh, so I'm going to talk about calc and dependency tracking and all these things here. And uh, yeah, if you got uh, well, there unfortunately I, ha I submitted two talk abstracts and I only got one accepted. So luckily you'll get two for the price of one. Look at that. That's uh, that's amazing. Um, so here we go. Ancient uh, ST base cell. So, so calc has been systematically refactored in the last uh, mm, two years, and we've made some huge progress. Um, it used to look like this. Now, this doesn't look like a mess to you because it's colored in a pretty way, but let me assure you, it's a disaster. Um, so uh, we used to have this, this column, and every cell in your spreadsheet was scattered somewhere randomly in memory, like miles away. So walking along this way or this way, it would be a sort of dotting all around uh, memory problem. Um, cache misses everywhere. Uh, big, big problem, uh, and loads of stuff was shoved into each cell. Uh, these broadcasters, you know, bits of text width, cell types, zip types, and, and then subclassed into all sorts of different things, including a empty cell, which stored dependencies, which something depended on an empty cell, like you know, the empty cell cell uh, for special empty cells. Anyway, so in 4.2, a while ago, we, we refactored this all to make it very nice and beautiful and clean, and uh, actually split much of the core of calc out into a thing called MDBS. Uh, and we now have nice sort of <laughs> long linear chunks. So if you have doubles, numbers, all the way down a column in Excel, or uh, calc, rather, uh, <laughs> when we import the files uh, from Excel, uh, th this will turn this into this beautiful representation down a column. So say you had a, a million doubles in a row, you get an eight megabyte block full of doubles. And this is very nice from a computation perspective. You want to be adding these up. It's very, very simple to do. Rather than dotting all over memory as you walk down this row, uh, and doing crazy stuff with big bit spaces. So anyway, we cleaned it up a whole lot, uh, which is great. So anyway, that's nothing new. That was uh, here uh, a year ago. The other thing we did uh, was to try and share formulas, formulas. So previously, each cell had its own copy of the formula. So often in spreadsheets, you'll fill a column down. So you'll have, you know, 100,000 or whatever formulae, and they're all basically the same formula, just copy and pasted down to do the same operation on lots of data. And we would copy uh, the formula token twice. So each of these, again, is allocated all over memory. And I'm thinking that, that still happens. Uh, but now we only do it once. So uh, for all of these cells that are similar down a group, uh, we have a single token array that represents the formula and then a reverse Polish notation in case you're a reverse Polish person. Um, so that's, that's helpful for the uh, insert stuff. And that, that had a huge impact on memory usage. So we uh, went from, you know, this is the sample document, which has had some, some formulae in it, uh, you know, sort of 30% plus uh, savings there, which is quite useful. But there's still a whole lot more to do, okay? So we debonged one of the most stupid uh, bits uh, of calc, and yet there's a whole lot more. So in, in 4.3, uh, we had a dependency problem. So after all of this work, uh, the dependencies were based, again, per cell. So each cell um, would look at the, uh, the stuff it depends on. So uh, let me just fire up a spreadsheet quickly, and, and maybe you'll uh, understand this uh, more easily. Uh, let me see. So we have a spreadsheet here, and we have some data here, very imaginative data, which we didn't like in public. And uh, you have something uh, simple here, like a sum. Uh, and we'll just make it depend on that, right? So this guy at the top here depends on three cells uh, to his left and below. And then when we fill this down, um, each of these guys were then, you know, so if you look in the middle here, you see the, the row has slid down. So basically you have this sliding rectangle that is the dependency for all these. And when I change a number here, uh, if I come in here, uh -huh, and I change that to, you know, uh, 10, we have to update these three guys. I don't know if you noticed that, but uh, these three guys here update, yeah? Now the way this was represented before was extremely, uh, extremely unpleasant. So... Uh, Basically, uh, for, for each of these guys, uh, you'd have a separate range that was sort of nailed into a very complicated area uh, broadcaster slot machine. I don't know, it's kind of lucky. You know, you pull the handle and your dependency uh, calculates. Um, but there, there were lots of these, one for each of these cells all the way down the column. But you looking at it and me looking at it as human beings go, well, it's obvious, right? There's a serious pattern going on here, right? You can see the pattern in the formula. So why not, instead of, wait a minute, let me get this uh, slideshow. Um, so why not, instead of storing, you know, hundreds of these areas and then trying to work out which one you've intersected with when you change data and, and what to uh, notify, why don't we instead store one, huh. wh wh which is kind of obvious, right? 
And then as we get a notification, we know which cell has changed when we're notified, and we can look at the formula, and we can back project the references. So a reference is a bit like a vector, you know, and a vector can go two ways. And so you can then work out which bits to change and recalculate here. And so by using a, a slightly cleverer algorithm, you can save a huge amount of memory, lots of linked lists, lots of these connections between listeners and uh, broadcasters, and make it just really a whole lot simpler. We tick, yeah, well, in the end goal, I in the end game, it should be simple. Um, so, uh, yeah, and there's actually no broadcaster uh, listener at all, actually, in this case. So the, the notification bypasses this legacy listener uh, broadcaster uh, connection. So time and space saving. You copy a large formula group if you're manipulating stuff in the spreadsheet around twice as fast um, over what was there before. So that's nice, uh, time and space saving. There are another whole load of quite large wins here. So we had about a threefold saving for copying and pasting large, large chunks of data overall in, in the first month. Um, another big part of that was script type op optimization. So one problem in a spreadsheet is working out how high ro rows are. So you'd think that was easy, but you have to measure text text is quite a complicated beast. And uh, the font size, unfortunately, is also complicated. And the font depends on what kind of text it is, whether it's Asian text, complex text, Latin text, and so on. And so you have to detect what the string type is, I think. Is this right, Marcus? I'm, I'm just rambling. Uh, before you can even uh, you know, measure the text, uh, which is, I, I should hasten to add a bit that I didn't mention at the beginning. I did none of this work. Like Kohei did it all, but he is not here. He, he, has, he lives in America. So um, yeah. So I, I read the title. Um, <laughs> so so don't, don't, don't think I did anything good. Um, anyhow, perfect. So uh, th that helps you uh, measure row heights, which is kind of, kind of useful when you're scrolling down your sheet you know, to be able to, to fit your rows and get everything the right size. Um, and we were, we were caching the result of that, but we were simply not copying it around. So when you copied data around, it would then carefully recalculate uh, all, of these, all of these things, which is really quite expensive. Um, so we, we made it that come around with the data, which, which helped a lot. But we also um, noticed that, for example, if you have doubles, uh, then you know the language the doubles in. You don't really need to do this very complicated, turn the double into a string, and then try and detect whether the string is Asian. Like, it, it's probably not going to be, right? You know, it's probably gonna be just uh, digits. Um, and so there was some really quite amusing, really stupid stuff there um, that we just ripped out. And so now you just go, ah. You know, and you, you remember now down the columns, we can tell there's a whole block of like a million doubles. And you can look at the format on it and go, oh, it's a general format. Bing, we know the script type for all of it. And we can stick it in a span array, and it's just the same type for the whole thing. So it's like mix and so on in. I hope. Don't want to see me do stuff like that. Um, so some, some nice wins there in size and, and performance too. And performance is really useful, not just because it's good to have a quick, snappy thing, but because we all love mobile apps, you know? And uh, mobile apps don't have any memory or uh, you know, any CPU either, so it's a bit, uh, bit constrained, so it helps there. A chart optimization, so every time the chart uh, dependency range was changed, uh, we were either reconstructing and rebuilding the whole chart. So we would tear the whole thing down and reconstruct it with all its source code, because the big charts, that's really not a good idea. And it turns out this is extremely slow. And we were doing that until, you know, for charts you couldn't even see, you know, on sheets that were no one was even looking at. So now I think uh, Kohei has delayed this until they actually become visible, which is helpful. Um, so that, that's some of the, the, the core infrastructural count stuff that's happened. This is some, this is some old stuff. This is sort of 4.2, 4.3. So, so a year ago, um, we were getting some of these numbers um, from threaded, threaded fast parsing. Uh, the fast in the fast parser that we discovered that we inherited uh, from the old days uh, is a complete misnomer. Whenever you see it fast, it probably means not very fast. Um, so, so for example, um, there's a very quick tokenization scheme. So we would tokenize XML so we wouldn't pass all these expensive strings around and compare them. And this is a good idea. And what is not a good idea is duplicating the string into an Uno sequence before you pass it to the tokenizing routine and then getting back, you know, and then throwing it away again. Um, so this completely wiped out any marginal benefit of that. Um, so we, we, we fixed a whole load of the stuff. And we, we started to see it because we split this out into its own thread. So we had a thread doing the parsing and tokenizing, and finally you could actually profile this and see it. Um, so some very significant wins here. The reference, uh, reference thing was uh, a popular office suite uh, with a spreadsheet. And, and, and you'll notice that we're, we're quicker than that, uh, loading their own format. So that's XLSX file and, and loaded to the customer file from the reference. And uh, somewhat quicker than the previous count versions. You may notice the seconds are long at the bottom. 
Um, so in 4.4, however, we, we started to look not so much at load, but at save. And uh, there's a thing called a fast serializer, which hadn't been looked at before. And again, fast, not a good sign. Um, so <laughs> it turns out the fast serializer was doing an individual syscall for writing like Severin, another one for table, another one for kernel, another for table shell, and so on, just to write this simple string. Each of those going into the Linux store and you know, writing the string. And on Windows, even slower. I mean, Windows system calls are more expensive by half, if not you know, a factor of three. So uh, this was just some really, really dumb stuff, some really nice fiddling there. So with some buffering improvements, uh, reducing the allocation crash, uh, better string application, it's finally actually fast, uh, which is good. Uh, sa saving a big, big thing there. The other thing we looked at, it's not just calc, it's also for various other uh, uses, is parallelizing zip. So the basic construction of an ODF file or a, an open XML file is a zip file. And we create lots of XML strings, and then we want to shove them all into this zip file, uh, which involves compressing them. So we look at the profiles here, and like, oh, lots of time spent compressing, compressing these streams. But once we've created them all, we can then compress them in parallel. So uh, Matish wrote a whole load of thing to parallelize zipping these things. Uh, so for certain sheets, that, that makes uh, quite a difference. If you have lots of large files, you need to, to slush down. Uh, it's actually off by default in 4.4. It turns out the most stupid thing we were doing was an impress. So the impress profile showed a lot of time deflating um, big things. And we didn't know what the big things were, but it turned out that we were recompressing JPEGs. Al almost all JPEGs are already heavily compressed and Huffman coded. And when you zip them, they get bigger. You know, zip deflate is not the perfect compression algorithm. And so what we were doing was we were spending a large chunk of our time compressing already compressed Huffman, you know, this is another inherited, uh, inherited feature uh, from the past. And we were going, oh, it's bigger, and then throwing it away again. So uh, we added like some two line fix uh, that, that says if it's an image JPEG, don't do something stupid with it. And again, a very nice, a big, you know, like 20% win for, uh, for, for some presentations, uh, which, is, which is pretty good. And, and much, much of it wiped out the benefit of threading that, which is a shame. And there's still some benefit we could get here by parallelizing the, 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 the uh, uh, zipping with the actual generation of the XML. And you know, we can do a whole lot more there um, for multiple threads. It'd be nice to do that, even for those sheets that have one single big sheet, because quite a lot of spreadsheets have just one big blob of data and then some analytics around it. And it would be nice to, uh, to do those things again. What else? XLX throw. So this is a mad, mad function that, uh, so Excel really represents things in rows, and we represent them in columns. If you've looked at the size of spreadsheets and the limits, it's like a broom handle. You know, like it, 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 it is very tall and very thin. And, uh, and so representing it in columns, we think, makes sense. Um, but the other side, rec it represents it the other way, and so we have to do some kind of um, unpleasant trying to work out what the best formats are you know, for various rows that is fundamentally trying to uh, invert this thing. And that was pretty slow, and we've got that to make a lot better. And just switching uh, stupid, inefficient uh, SQL things to slightly less inefficient ones uh, in itself just changes things up. So that's my talk. I hope I haven't overrun horribly. If I've got some spare time, I'll show Marcus's ZCL demo, which I should have showed earlier, but couldn't for some reason. Um, am, I, am I good for time? It's like eight minutes. No, I have two minutes. Excellent. Thank you. This is very kind. Um, anyhow, here's the punchline. It continues to improve. Uh, lots of code refactoring, um, representation improvements. There's plenty more to do. If you're interested, talk to Marcus, who's awesome, uh, over here, or Ica, who's hiding somewhere, not in here. And uh, yeah, get involved, or come and see me. I'm cheap to have you there. So uh, thank you. Thank you. What am I looking at? So are there any questions while I'm, uh, you know? Questions? Yeah, Chris. <laughs> yeah, well, I got this gentleman over here, put his hand up first. Go for it. Yep. Yep. No, you consolidate it. Um, yeah, that's, that's quite important um, to get the, the performance uh, performance needs. So this is, um, I think this is, does that look like the GL version? It's hard to tell now because they're quite similar. Um, so, you know, you can see uh, lines with uh, various combinations of aliasing and anti-aliasing and, you know, caps and... Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, this is, this is deliberate, okay? So, so this has, this has a, a line, line cap here, or a cap and button, whatever. Um, but we want to test all the combinations, so uh, that's, that's that. Uh, or, or, for example, there's a nice one with the images. Ah, look at this beautiful, you know, the image thing. So, so there's a whole latest um, scaling, interpolating, whatever logic you want to do really quickly on the GPU. So uh, you know, I'm trying to get some sample data to play with VCL and make sure it uh, works properly. Does that answer your question? Anyway, sorry, I got distracted. Yeah, we, we reconsolidate because we want the performance wins. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's a real pain, actually, because when the, the, the default um, way that spreadsheets work is, so um, uh, let's see if we can get a Calc spreadsheet here. So, you know, say you've got a whole load of data and a whole load of numbers, uh, you uh, formulae like this, and you insert a row in the middle. Uh, typically, it's broken it. Right, you, you can't not break it, unfortunately, if you insert these things very easily. So, you know, we, we split this formula group into two, and now we do that. Almost inevitably, you paste the same formula in, and you reconsolidate it. Which is really lame, but, you know, life is lame. So, it's actually pretty cool, but uh, anyway, right, who's next? Sorry. No, I don't. So, <laughs> you know, I, uh, Marcus, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to Marcus. He loves patches. Hmm? Awesome. So if you're a student, you can do this cool new feature this summer and get paid for the privilege. You're Marcus. He's cool. But if you want to do it beforehand, don't stop. You know, like uh, we could, we could get involved with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Radius is so nice. I know they're cheated. Yeah, I'm not going to do. Um, any other questions? I think I should probably be hassled off at this point. Uh, sorry. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. So what we do is profiling-driven work. Um, so this is the customer. We want it to be faster, and. You know, they look at it and they say it's too slow, and we say, fine, we'll fix it. Um, what, what, I mean, one of the challenging ones was we want it to be faster than Excel. We said, fine, we'll make it faster than Excel. Give us that. And lo, it was faster than Excel. Like, you know, that's that's fine. Oh, gosh. Uh, there's still lots of low-hanging fruit in various areas, like load time now. Uh, we need to work on libxml, because actually our, our problems are relatively small. Customer. So, so it's your time. If you want to work on it, we have some great ideas, but you can you can prioritize it how you how you wish. So lots of people work on what they want to work on. Um, we do cool stuff in our, our spare time too, but uh, customers uh, keep the bread on the table and the children looking happy. So uh, we we would tend to do what they want, uh, and you know they, they they bring the juice and hope. So uh, in this case, that's customer driven. Um, obviously, in partnership with us, we work with them and say, look, here are the problems. Would you want to you want to tackle them? Um, and they say, yeah. So the, the heavily data-driven, profile-driven, I haven't shown you the tasks and the lines and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to try and work out where we can get the maximum impact for these folks. Cool. Thank you. Excellent question. Who's next? Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry. One, one more. Okay. Yeah? Yes, of course. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, so, so when we did the OpenCL work, we said that it got between 30 and 500 times faster. The problem is it's, it's very dependent on your data file. If you have a data file with one item in it, the load time is minuscule anyway, hard to measure, and dominated by re-rendering the toolbar like in global. So, you know, wh whereas if you, if you have, you know, a, a, a million rows, um, then we can probably already do better than Excel if it's you know simple simple data structures. 
Um, but you know, then again, there's some qualification issues on Windows. We don't have a 64-bit port yet, so that's happening in the next release. So then you have addressable memory concerns. Da 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 da. It's a very complicated answer, right? But if you, you know, if you want support so that you can move your Excel things, we love to see real-world data. We love to see people's big sheets. I, I can't promise we'll fix anything or even profile it, but maybe if you mail it to me, we'll we can come through and have a look at it. Um, but don't expect anything, like you know, <laughs> the, 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 you know, the, the paying customers come first. So. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, and, and while I'm here, there's other one other thing I want to uh, credit the smoothsters who are hiding in the audience, who 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 were behind the Android port, which I, I think you'll admit was awesome. So, uh, you know, do you guys stand up? You know, give give them a big big round. Come on, come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil, these guys, these guys rock. You know? Woo!